Even more delays are on the horizon for NASA's Artemis program, and the next delay could be a big one, up to two years worth of delay for Artemis II. There is one major culprit, and we'll talk about that, but there's also hints that there's other delays going on behind the scenes for Artemis III and beyond. But of course, NASA does not want to say anything until they know for sure. So for right now, they're keeping the schedule as is, but as we well know, the current schedule is in no way realistic. This is, of course, NASA's Artemis program, the mission to return humans to the moon and set up a sustainable presence on the surface of the moon and in lunar orbit. This program in its entirety has been delayed quite significantly. I'm Lara Forsick. I'm the executive director of Astrolytical, and this is really my thing. I've been watching NASA's Moon to Mars program since Constellation. I have seen the ebbs and flows here, and I have known that NASA has never been realistic about its mission schedule. I do want to backtrack a little bit because it's going to make sense later. When NASA was transitioning away from the previous program, which was a asteroid redirect mission, if you remember that, and a journey to Mars, then there was this intermediary, this, this period where NASA NASA was trying to figure out what to do. So it set up something called Exploration Mission 1 and 2. And those missions were to give SLS and Orion an excuse to continue existing. Orion is the capsule on top of the rocket that has been in works for quite some time since Constellation. SLS is the space launch system that's the very large rocket. You can say it's a derivative of the Ares rocket in a sense. EM-1 was envisioned to fly SLS and Orion uncrewed that turned into Artemis 1. It was initially envisioned to be in 2018. But of course, it didn't actually launch until 2022. EM-2, which turned into Artemis 2, that was SLS and Orion with a crew on it. And that was envisioned for 2021. And that is the mission that we're currently in discussions about that is currently on the schedule for September 2025. But that is not realistic. And we're going to talk about what the different slips might look like. It wasn't until... 2019, February of 2019, in fact, that NASA decided on the return of humans to the surface of the moon. They were envisioning that mission to be 2028. But that didn't last long because just a month later, Vice President Mike Pence changed that date from 2028 to 2024. But I want to come back to that at the end of the video because it's going to make sense. It's all going to come together. Before I get into all of the bad news, I do want to mention a little bit of good news since it's not all negative. Last month, NASA transferred the SLS core stage, and that's Boeing as the prime contractor. Boeing has been in the news for a lot of negative reasons lately. This is positive news. The core stage of SLS for Artemis II shipped from Michoud Assembly Facility in Louisiana to Kennedy Space Center, where it is in the Vehicle Assembly Building. And it is ready to be stacked. We're going to talk about the stacking and that delay a little bit later. What you're seeing on the screen, that's from Artemis I, so that's not from this current mission that we're talking about, Artemis II. A little bit more positive news. Yesterday, the Launch Vehicle Stage Adapter, that's the LVSA for SLS, that's that cone looking thing, that arrived, that shipped from Marshall Space Flight Center to Kennedy Space Center, again, to the VAB. This thing connects to the Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage as part of the upper stage for SLS Block 1. And it is only used for Block 1, so it's only used for Artemis 1, 2, and 3. Artemis 4 and beyond will use the Exploration Upper Stage. And very recently, I did a video on Exploration Upper Stage and the, the uh, problems that Boeing is having. The Government Accountability Office called them out for having quality control problems and workforce problems building the Exploration Upper Stage for Artemis 4. So if you want to check that out, you can watch that video after this one. Back to the LVSA. So the prime contractor for that is Teledyne Brown Engineering. And this is not any problem of Teledyne Brown. There's no, they didn't do anything wrong here. But what NASA is doing is anticipating that there will be delays. This is an article put out by Jeff Faust of Space News yesterday. I'll link it below. He found a procurement where NASA is saying, hey, we expected this contract with Teledyne Brown to end in September of this year, but we're actually going to extend it another two years to September 2026 because we believe that there's probably going to be delays with Artemis 2 and 3. And in fact, there's options within this extension where it could actually actually extend to June of 2027 or even December of 2029. So they're really leaving a lot of wiggle room here, a lot of margin for not just Artemis 2 and 3 uh, delivering that part, but also any kind of post Artemis 3 analysis that Teledyne Brown would need to do for this LVSA. So officially, NASA is not saying, hey, we're slipping Artemis 2 and Artemis 3. But behind the scenes, they are preparing for it by doing contract extensions with certain suppliers and contractors. What would cause Artemis 2 to be delayed? Well, the same thing that's been causing it to be delayed since Artemis 1 returned, and that's the Orion heat shield. 
That's pretty much the one thing that went wrong with Artemis 1. It seemed like a flawless mission otherwise, but the heat shield experienced unexpected problems. Charred chunks of the heat shield stripped away from Orion as it was re-entering Earth's atmosphere in a way that NASA and the engineers did not expect. And this is a Lockheed Martin vehicle, by the way. Lockheed Martin being the prime contractor for Orion. Even though Orion splashed down safely and, you know, if it had had a crew on board, the astronauts would have been perfectly fine. They still want to understand why the heat shield performed in a way that was unexpected. So they've been doing an investigation on the heat shield now for like almost two years, and they've been trying to understand they have not figured out the root cause. And until they figure out the root cause and, and what to do about it, if anything, they are uncomfortable putting a crew in Orion for Artemis II. And that has been the major delay. According to an article that I will link below by Ars Technica, Stephen Clark, NASA is looking at two options right now. They're looking to either change the trajectory of the re-entry of Orion so that maybe it performs more like they expect, or they're looking at taking apart the whole heat shield, making changes to the heat shield itself. And if they do that, that would pretty much be a two-year delay from September 2025 to sometime in 2027. That is a major setback for the Artemis program schedule. I have been anticipating this entire time that it would not be September 2025, that it would slip to 2026, but it slipped to 2027. Like that is such a major setback for Orion, for Artemis, for NASA. Nothing is set in stone right now. There are no, de there are no decisions that have been made, but remember I talked about the SLS stacking because the core stage arrived at the VAB and it's waiting to be stacked, but they are not going to stack it until they decide what to do with the heat shield. So they are delaying stacking. They wanted to start stacking next month in September, but they are going to delay that process until they decide what to do with the heat shield. They did not say when they're going to make a decision about the heat shield. So they did not say when they're going to make a decision about when to stack it. The reason why they are delaying stacking is because there's a length of time that SLS can be stacked. And that length of time, you know, they really haven't figured that out yet, actually. So it was one year and then they um, changed it. They waived that for Artemis 1. They made it almost two years and now they could extend it again. They could say SLS is safe to stack for more than two years, but they haven't. So until they know the schedule better about when Artemis 2 is actually going to launch, they don't want to stack it in the VAB yet. So according to Catherine Corner, who is the Associate Administrator for Development of Exploration Systems in that Ars Technica article, she says, we will wait until we have the decision on the heat shield or at least understanding of that before we make the decision on stacking. Artemis II may need to be disassembled so they can figure out the heat shield problem. And that disassembly, that partial disassembly at least, will delay it till 2027. And if Artemis II is delayed until 2027, then it pretty much guarantees that Artemis III will be 2028, the first landing of people on the surface of the moon since Apollo would be 2028. So here we have come full circle where the realities of engineering and the realities of the fact that SLS and Orion have been funded pretty well, but a lot of the program has not been funded pretty well. So not only are we waiting on this heat shield problem to be figured out, but Artemis 3 is also waiting on spacesuits and the SpaceX Starship HLS, that's the human landing system, and other things that are in there that are smaller that are delaying the mission. I'm a huge fan of the Artemis program. Even though I'm very critical about NASA and very critical about a lot of the prime contractors and what they're doing, like I'm still rooting them on because I want this to succeed. I'm hoping that the architecture of Artemis will evolve over time to make more sense and to be more cost effective and sustainable. Until we get that momentum, it's hard to get the public excited about it. So I'm really hoping that they can figure out the Orion heat shield problem without having to delay the mission an additional two years. And if you are curious about the whole Boeing quality control problems that's delaying Artemis 4, watch this video next.